Is VT still king? VT is the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index ETF. It is a highly regarded ETF that could be your entire portfolio. It is a very simple and elegant fund because it diversifies you across nearly 10,000 stocks in about 40 countries. It reflects the global wisdom of all investors with its stock and country allocations matching market cap weights. In my opinion, it is the ultimate Boglehead fund. However, there are some newer funds that are challenging VT for single fund global equity exposure. These funds are from Dimensional and Advantis. First is DFAW, the Dimensional World Equity ETF. Next is AVGE, the Avantis All Equity Markets ETF. Finally, there's AVGV, which is the Avantis All Equity Markets Value ETF. In this video, we'll look at an overview of each of these funds, why some people consider them over VT, and more. First, let's start with VT. This is the ETF version. They also have a mutual fund version, VTWAX. But this fund seeks to track the performance of the FTSE Global All Cap Index. So it's both developed and emerging markets globally. If we look at the portfolio composition of this fund, we can see it has nearly 10,000 stocks. If we look at the exposures, these are the different markets or regions and then the different countries it's invested in. So you can see it's almost 62% invested in the US, then divided amongst nearly 40 other countries. And these are uh, the top holdings uh, sorted by market cap, basically. Um, so you could go through and see all the different 9,830 holdings in this fund. Next, we have DFAW, the Dimensional World Equity ETF. This is a pretty new fund. It was launched at the end of September 2023, less than one year old. You can see the weighting to US is almost 10% higher than VT. It also has developed an emerging international. And you can see it's actually a fund of funds in that it holds other dimensional funds within this fund. So it actually only has uh, six holdings listed. However, further down, they have some information, I think, on the number of equities. Yeah, so it has almost 13,000 companies in this index. You can see more breakdowns. Let's take a quick look at the prospectus and the investment strategy. Uh, you should always read this when you're considering investing in a fund. But basically, this looks like uh, what we expect from Dimensional and that the advisor implements in an integrated investment approach that combines research, portfolio design, portfolio management, and trading functions. You probably actually need to read some of the prospectuses from the underlying ETFs to better understand this, but generally Dimensional is known for applying factor research to investing. So they'll basically start uh, maybe with the index and then apply filters to all the companies and then exclude certain companies or rank them higher and maybe adjust, uh, it's not market cap weighted, but they adjust that based on these different factors that could be value, size, momentum, profitability, and so on. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Next, we'll look at AVGE, the Avantis All Equity Markets ETF. I think this is also a pretty new fund. I don't know the exact date it launched. I'm not seeing it here. Um, oh, uh, end of September 2022, so it's uh, just under two years old. And basically says, let me make this a little larger, the strategy is designed to provide exposure to a broadly diversified set of companies, sectors, and countries while emphasizing securities with higher expected returns. Uh, and they do this, it's also a fund of fund using other Avantis funds. So both Dimensional and Avantis have a bit of active management. They're trying to boost the returns by getting factor exposure. And there's a lot of research that goes into that. And again, we'll talk more about it in a minute. Just trying to do a quick overview of these different funds. Um, see, here's, I don't think they actually show, this is also 70% US, so they're overweighting US compared to the global market cap. I'm not seeing the number of stocks in this index but it looks like it has, is that 10? Yeah, it looks like 10 different Avantis ETFs contained within this ETF. 
the different mid cap, small cap, large cap, and so on. Uh, let's look at the prospectus real quick for the investment strategies. Uh, yeah, it's pretty generic and just says it looks to invest in the fund of funds. So again, you probably have to, to really understand it, go and understand how each one of the ETFs is allocating the capital, but it's probably based on this factor uh, tilt method, at least a minor factor tilt probably from what I've seen. Next is AVGV, Avantis All Equity Markets Value ETF. So this one's gonna have a bit more of a value tilt to it. Looks like this fund is also pretty new, launched just under one year ago, in end of June 2023. And it says this is designed to provide exposure to a broadly diversified set of companies, sectors, and countries, while focusing on securities we believe to have higher expected returns companies that are trading at lower valuations with higher profitability ratios. The strategy pursues its objective through investing in a series of other Avantis ETFs. Yeah, so it's basically, uh, they, they say they have some of the benefits associated with indexing, but then they're adding value by putting these additional filters and uh, factor tilts into the portfolio. Uh, so if we look at that one, that's actually much closer to VT and the allocation to the U.S. And it looks like they're invested in about seven different uh, underlying funds or six Avantis and then some government money market. Um, so you, you could look at the prospectus to learn more. My bet is it looks a bit like the AVGE prospectus. So I'm starting to put this table together to keep track of what we've seen so far so we can compare these funds. So we have VT, which is not a fund of fund. Uh, it has about a 62% allocation to the US, the global market cap weight. It's an index fund, it's not active, and there's no tilt. Whereas when you get into these other funds, they're all fund of funds. There's a US bias in DFAW and AVGE. All of these are active. And these two funds are more, have more of a minor tilt, DFAW and AVGE. And AVGV has more of a medium tilt, much more tilted towards value than the other funds. I made an entire video going into the details on factor investing, which I'll link up here and down below. But the very high level summary. So this is based on academic research, which won the equivalent of a Nobel Prize in economics. And what this research suggested is that like, say you're investing in bonds, as, and that's more of a low-risk investment. Whereas when you invest in stocks, it's a higher-risk investment, so you have to get an extra return for taking that extra risk. And that's called market beta risk, or market risk. And then what they discovered or suggest is that there's additional risk premiums in the market like the size of the company, and that smaller companies actually have a risk premium. Because when you invest in a smaller company, you expect to get a higher return. And the same goes for value companies that have a higher uh, price, uh, a lower price to earnings ratio. So basically they earn more money for every dollar you're putting into the company. They're more profitable generally. And then there's also profitability factors, momentum, and some other factors that have been studied or suggested since then. So it's all based on academic research, looking at historical data and trying to figure out certain distinct risks that some companies might have, which should then give you a higher return if you take on that extra risk. And this is basically what is factor investing. Dimensional, it's really DFA, Dimensional Fund Advisors, they basically pioneered this. And some of these uh, people that won the equivalent of the Nobel Prize in Economics for this research helped found and start Dimensional Fund Advisors. And for a long time, you had to use an investment advisor and pay that advisor a fee to be able to access the DFA funds. However, now they've been starting to launch ETFs and it's becoming more accessible to average investors. And Avantis was a spinoff of DFA, where some of the people from DFA left, and they went and started Avantis. And they kind of got a head start on offering these ETFs to everyday people without needing to use an investment advisor. So they both have similar types of funds, similar types of research, and people that founded and are running the companies. 
So this is just a very high level overview of factor investing. If you want more details, again, I'll link the video up here and below. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My channel is all about how to help you achieve financial independence. I produce this no-nonsense content for free to help you. If you get value from this video, make sure to like and subscribe to support free financial education. So next I want to discuss expenses and trading fees. So first let's start with the expense ratio. This is just the fee that's basically taken out of the investment returns of the fund every year to pay the company or the people managing the fund. So when you have actively managed funds, they're going to charge higher fees because they take more effort and time to manage. And we can see that here where VT has the lowest expense ratio of these funds at 0.07%. Now that's $7 for every $10,000 you have invested, and that's annually. Whereas DFAW, AVGE, and AVGV have fees approaching a quarter of a percent. So for DFAW, that's $26 per year. That's almost four times the fee of VT. Where AVGE is $23 a year for every 10,000, and AVGV is $26 every year for every 10,000 you're investing. So you're looking at three to four times as much money that you're gonna have to pay in this expense ratio every year to have these people manage the fund for you and apply these factor tilts. Next, I wanna talk about trading fees. So I'm gonna use ETF.com to get consistent values for all these different ETFs. Some of them list them on the website, but they're not always consistent. So on ETF.com, you can see tradeability. I made an entire video going on the, into the differences of ETFs and how ETFs work. I basically summarize an entire 200 page book in a 15 minute video. I'll link that up here and below. Uh, but very briefly, uh, ETFs come with trading fees. There's a daily spread. Uh, so that's basically the bid and the difference between the bid and the ask. So the ask is what someone's willing to sell it for. The bid is what someone's willing to buy it for. Usually there's uh, like maybe a cent difference or it could be more depending on the ETF. Uh, it could be several cents or a dollar. It really depends on the ETF. And then that spread is basically like a commission for the market maker. And that spread changes over time. And these values, uh, the numbers are a little small, but these are ranging from 0.008% up to 0.014%. So it's a pretty low spread. Then there's also a thing called a premium to discount. Uh, so the ETF doesn't always trade the exact value of the fund's holdings. Uh, so it fluctuates and it could be trading at less than what the fund's holdings are actually worth or at a little more than what the fund's holdings are worth. Uh, and you can see that VT ranges from about negative uh, 10%, let me move myself, that it ranges from negative 0.1% uh, up to uh, just over 0.2%. Uh, so if you look at this trading data, they have the median uh, the median premium to discount for 12 months, which is 0.07%. And there's the average spread, which is 0.01%. The average spread is actually about one cent. Uh, so I've gone ahead. Uh, and also there's the median daily volume, which is how much of the fund is trading on the market every day. I've gone ahead and I've done it for all four of these funds. I've taken the data from ETF.com and put it into the spreadsheet for our comparison. So first we notice VT has much higher volume. It's basically 100 times AVGE and nearly 100 times DFAW and almost 200 times or more than AVGV. Uh, so the average spread you can see is much higher on these other funds, probably because of the lower volume. The premium to discount is somewhat comparable. I'm actually surprised it's this low for AVGV uh, but premium to discount is usually much higher for funds that have international stocks. And that's because uh, the international markets aren't open during US trading hours when these funds trade. So and it's difficult to get the exact uh, value. Uh, so that contributes to a little bit higher premium to discount. So basically when you add these two together, I'm calling that total trading costs. And I'll just make that bold. Uh, so these are really the different expenses 
you have with these funds. So you're gonna pay an annual expense ratio. And when you buy and sell the fund, you're gonna pay the trading costs. So these are all the most important factors I evaluate when I'm looking at investing in funds. You should definitely read the prospectus, understand all the risks. Maybe there's some other things you should consider, but this is what I do. Don't take this as investment advice, but this is just how I do it. And when you're looking at these expense ratios, these are known. Like you're certainly going to have to pay three to four times as much to invest in these other funds you're certainly gonna to have to pay about two times the trading fees to use these other funds. What is unknown is if the risk premiums, the factor risk premiums will actually materialize and have higher returns in the future. It may or may not, and it may not exceed the fees that you're paying. So that's something you take the risk with of investing in these types of factor funds. So I'm always conflicted. Part of me really likes the simplicity of these all-in-one funds. I really like VT, but I actually don't use VT in my portfolio. However, my portfolio basically matches VT. I just use separate funds. So instead of having one fund that has everything, I have, say, the US stock market index, the equivalent of ETI, and the international stock market index, the equivalent of VXUS. And then I just match the weightings in VT when I rebalance about once a year. I, I try to keep them in balance as I contribute. So I put the data for these two ETFs in here as well, just for comparison. And they're even lower cost and they have even higher volume than these other funds. So I think that's also a good alternative. Um, another strategy that some people use um, maybe is just to invest in VT. And then if they do want that factor tilt, maybe they add a specific small cap value fund just to get some of that exposure to those factors. So that's another thing that some people do. However, this is really a trade-off because there are certain optimizations you can get by using the fund separately. Like there's the international uh, tax credit, the foreign income exclusion that you can get for the taxes that your international fund is paying, which you can't get right now with a fund like VT. Uh, if it were more than 50% international, you'd be able to get that tax credit. However, that tax credit may not actually be all that valuable because it only applies on a taxable account. And there are other considerations where it may actually not even make sense to try to get that tax credit. I may make another video on that in the future. However, the main point being, when you buy these funds, you're basically stuck with it but it's very simple. So you're optimizing either simplicity or maybe trying to eke out some extra returns, maybe taking a little bit of a different tilt, maybe having a little more home country bias or maybe even more international bias. That's up to you. So you can fine tune that when you're using the individual funds or you can just keep it really simple and buy the one fund. I think either approach is fine. It really depends on your individual preferences. I really prefer to match the market cap weights because I believe in using the collective wisdom of all the market participants and I just let them do the work for me and then I copy them. And that's the beauty of a fund like VT is it helps you do that with such low fees, $7 every year for every $10,000 you have invested. That's really cheap to allocate your capital globally at market cap weights across nearly 10,000 companies. Now these other funds are also excellent. However, some of them have extra US tilt. They aren't market cap weighted and there's a degree of active management in the portfolio. When you're choosing an ETF for your portfolio, it is a major commitment. Now it is a little easier to make changes in a tax advantaged account. However, if you're starting to buy these ETFs in taxable accounts and you want to hold them for decades, your built-in capital gains are gonna become massive. It's basically like getting married in a taxable account. It will be very expensive if you, to try to, if you decide to separate from your ETF. So you may have massive gains and have to pay capital gains taxes on those gains. It may be net investment income tax, depending on how much of a change you're making. Uh, so that could be very significant if you decide to make a change later. So you better be committed to trying to capture these risk premiums if you're going to use these other funds. 
and they actually have a little more flexibility. Maybe they aren't 10% extra in the US and they change that in the future. You really don't know. And if you read the prospectus for these different funds, they have a lot more freedom to make those changes than a fund like Vanguard that's just trying to match the index. So that's up to you. Are you really committed to this strategy? If it's in a tax advantage account, the cost of changing it later isn't as high, but in a taxable account, it could be very bad. You're certainly going to pay three to four times the annual expense ratios and two times the trading costs to use these funds. So it's up to you. If you're really committed to going after those risk premiums, uh, you can do that and pay these fees. So I wanna hear from you in the comments below. What do you think? Is VT still king? Or are these alternative global equity ETFs attractive? Let me know. As I mentioned, I still prefer VT. That's what I'm doing with my portfolio. But I don't fault anyone if they want to go after the factor tilts. These are actually great ETFs. They are actively managed. I prefer the market cap weightings. But if you are going to have an actively managed fund, this is basically like the slight active management layered onto an index-like strategy. I don't fault anyone for following that if that's what they want to do. I just have a lot more conviction in the market cap-weighted index. Thanks for watching, everyone. Later.